Hey everybody, welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling and I'm here to make sense of the madness. The other day there was a um, reporter who got kind of lambasted by Pierre Polyev when she attempted to bully and harass him uh, in a question at a, at a statement. So I did a video on it and the next day the Heritage Minister Pascal St. Ong came out and decided that Pierre Polyev was a you know, all kinds of the names that she was calling. And the one thing that she liked to say was that he was not being a strong leader, that he was being weak because he couldn't answer the question. So I'd like to just point to a couple of things that expose the hypocrisy in her statement. I'm going to remind you of a couple of things that she said, and then I'm going to let you see some examples of how that actually is not being played out by both sides of the argument. Then I'll finish with my two cents. First of all, I want to say that he's pretty thin skin. Uh, it's our job when we're politicians to answer questions from journalists, we're accountable to the Canadian population and it's the journalist's job to ask those questions. So yes, when you're a politician, you need to answer questions. Well, what if you think that the government will not be funding That's not, that's not what I said. Yes, it is. Wait, I can read it back. Yeah. What, what, what I have said is that the solution to our transport challenge has by many different things, including massive investment in public transit, including investment in electrification of transportation. And of course we're funding roads. We have, we have programs to fund roads. What we have said, and, and maybe I should have been more specific in, in the past, is that we, we don't have funds for large projects like the Troisième Lien that the CAC have, has been trying to do for, for many our government has made the decision to stop investing in new road infrastructure. I, I, I just told you that I should have been more specific in, in, in that statement and, and specified that it was project like the Troisième Lien, which myself and many of my colleagues have said many times that the federal government had no funds for a project like this. And you can look back and you, you, will, see, you will find numerous statements by myself and many other cabinet colleagues on, 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 on this specifically. You said we had all the roads we need. You said get all the roads we need. You said we had all the roads we need. You said we had all the roads we need. You can't stand by that. Mr. Voltaire, can I just get you to talk about Minister Kubot's plan to stop all funding for new roads? People in Mississauga, small businesses across the country depend on roads, and you've got an environment minister that told an audience in Montreal, "No more federal money for roads and road networks. We've got all the roads we need." Have yeah. you had any consultation on that idea? I have not heard anything specifically, but I'll make sure to pass on my uh, the message on to my colleagues. And how do you stand on that? You think the federal government should fund road network expansion, right. Highway 409, Thank you. Four, yeah. Highway Thank 7? You. Why, why, why leave? It's a small business issue. The leader's question. The question was, how can the prime minister waste millions of dollars on a rive scam when Canadians can't afford to eat, heat, or house themselves? The answer is because the NDP keeps that Prime Minister in power. That's right. That's right. And votes consistently in committee to cover up the scandal and shut down investigations. This was supposed to cost... This app was supposed to cost 80 grand, said the Prime Minister. Now it's at least 60 million, but we don't know for sure because of missing documents. What is the full... And final cost of a rive scam. Here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I've uh, addressed these questions, but I will highlight that part of the uh, Conservatives' attacks uh, on this situation uh, is because they deeply deplore all the measures we put in to keep Canadians safe during the pandemic. We remember how they gave in to conspiracy theories, spreading anti-vaxxer conspiracies, uh, standing against measures that we needed to put forward to keep Canadians safe. Yes, as we did all those things, we needed... needed we made sure that rules were followed, and any rules that weren't followed, there are consequences uh, and there are investigations ongoing. We will continue to keep Canadian safety at the fore. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. What was the full and final cost of the app? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, that, are, uh, that is among the questions that there are direct follow-ups, uh, investigations ongoing right now, both internal and external, to ensure uh, that as rules were evidently broken, uh, there are consequences, there is an accountability for this. There is no, no doubt that there are serious challenges around procurement uh, and the public service uh, that were evident at that time. We need to make sure that is fixed. We need to move forward uh, in a way that it takes uh, better responsibility uh, for uh, the kinds of challenges that we saw in this situation. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. How much? 
The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, during the pandemic, we were there to invest, to protect Canadians and keep their lives safe, despite the objections and the conspiracy theorism of the Conservative Party, we stepped up in many, many different ways. But even as we did, we expected and we continue to expect that rules around procurement be followed by the public service. It is uh, obvious that that was not the case here. That is why there are ongoing investigations, there will be consequences, and there will be changes made uh, to the public services systems. Well, I heard Gilbo say that what he said he didn't say, like I heard him deny saying it, even though he put out a printed statement and even though the guy had the receipts there and he just decided that he was going to walk away in the middle and not answer the question, right? He just walked away and didn't answer the question. So according to Pascal St. Ong, that means that he's not a very good leader. That means that he's not able to handle, he must be pretty thin skinned. Then we had the minister who represents, uh, well, I don't think she's a minister, but I think she's the secretary and represents Streetsville in, in Toronto saying, oh, uh, I never heard of that, but I'll answer it. And then her handler pushed her along when he was asked what her opinion is. So again, must be thin skinned, right? Must be both thin skinned and not a very good leader if they can't answer a very straightforward, simple question brought to them by the press. And Justin Trudeau can't answer the same question asked three times in a row by the by the member of the opposition. I mean, think about that. In in that f four minute word salad ramble, he used the word conspiracy. He used the word pandemic a couple of times, but he did not say the app cost this much. Right now, he has access to all the records. He knows exactly how much money was transferred to them. They know that stuff. Him and the finance minister and the PMO's office. That's all being kept track of. Come on. Don't go telling me that they don't know the answer. Maybe he doesn't know the answer, but there is a person something there somewhere that knows the answer. And if you hit it all during, uh, for all of your reasons, that's all the more reason to say that you don't know the answer. But instead, he didn't say that, right? What he said was, it's all somehow not his fault. And then he said that, that ever annoying statement that he, he loves to say, step up, right? He likes roll up his sleeves, step up, and we got Canadians' backs. The thing about those statements, especially the step up that bother me is that you have been in power for eight years because you asked for people to give you the leadership role. So when you're the leader, it's not stepping up, but it's doing the job you signed on for. It's not, oh, I, I made some gigantic sacrifice and I stepped up and I took the heat and all this stuff that you want to say. It's actually the job you signed on to do. And apparently you are thin skinned, so thin skinned that you can't answer a straightforward question. And according to your minister of heritage, not a very good leader because you can't answer a straightforward question because you, Pierre Pauly have asked you in no uncertain terms, how much, and you did not answer that question. You wandered around the map and you tried to make it sound like you were filling the, the time up with a bunch of the repeated words and repeated sentences. But you did not answer the question, which means under the, the exact same uh, rules that um, you applied to Pierre Polyev, who did answer the question, as a matter of fact, he just didn't do it in a way that you wanted him to. You must be thin skinned and a bad leader. I just think that as Canadians, we need to see through this. We can't allow flowery sound bites to take over our way of thinking. There's millions and millions and millions of dollars in corruption here. There's no roads being built. There's, there's dodging questions, dodging straight answers, like straightforward questions. And we deserve better. I don't care what your excuses are. It's time to, to start fixing the problems. It's been a while. You should already have the answer to what happened to, you know, how much money there is. You should be, you know, making sure that your zealot of a, of an environment minister starts to get control of himself. No more roads. Everybody's going into buses now. You y'all got to take the bus. You're in a hurry. I don't care. The bus got to hit the stops. It's all public transit or else. Anyway, I'm going to wrap here. I just wanted to show you how when people say one thing and then they do another that they're, I don't believe them to be uh, considered um, credible. I think that if you want me to believe that what you have to say, you have to practice what you preach. So I want to thank you all for listening. 
I want you to encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell all your friends. I'll talk to you next time. Uh, under the previous conservative government, everything was perfect.